What's up, everybody? Welcome to the weekly program. Today is episode 32. Uh, we're going to talk with my friend uh, Stefan from Spam. And uh, at the moment, we're just waiting for, for Stefan to join the conversation. Yeah, today we're going to talk a little bit about uh, his illustration, the festival he created, and then the label. Uh, I think it's going to be a cool, a cool uh, conversation. Again, like someone that doesn't actually play in a band, but does a lot of things for the punk community and for, yeah, for the punk scene and the DIY scene. So that's, that's basically why I, oh, cool. Here, here's Stefan. I'm going to join him to the conversation now. All right. Hey, buddy. Hey, how are you? I'm good, man. How are you, brother? You, you all right? Yeah, yeah, cool, cool. Everything's can fine. You, can you hear me well? And, uh, and I can hear you. Ah, can, you can you hear me? Perfect. Amazing, okay. man. Amazing, Great. dude. First of all, buddy, thank you so much for, for coming here and having like this hour conversation or about that. Um, yeah, it's like a pleasure having you here. And uh, yeah, most importantly, because you do like a lot of different stuff. And uh, yeah, basically express yourself in a thing that is not music, but you influence music as well. Mm -hmm. So yeah. thank you for being here on the show. And Thanks, yeah, welcome. Thanks for having me. Ah, dude, no, it's, it's my pleasure, as I said, man. Um, first of all, like um, what, what I what I usually do in the beginning of the conversation, because this is going to be uploaded to IGTV and YouTube, um, yeah. I usually start with a little um, e intro bio uh, from my guest. So if you can say your name and introduce yourself and what you do, then then we go to the rest of the conversation, all right? Okay, sure. Um, <laughs> hi, my name is uh, Spam. I do a lot of illustrations for punk rock bands. Uh, I have my own festival called Spam Fest, and I uh, run my own record label called Spam Records. Yeah, all all based in Austria. Amazing, man! Mm -hmm. Amazing, uh, dude. It's actually it's my first guest from. You're my first guest from Austria, man. So uh, okay, this cool. Is, <laughs> this is now becoming like a little bit like more international, like conversation by conversation. <laughs> you know, this is this is quite quite good, man. Um, <laughs> First of all, and because uh, the other day we spoke a little bit and um, I thought like you, you told me that illustration was like the first thing you actually started doing. Um, yeah. How did you get like, how did you get in contact with the art world and how did you start it like painting, drawing, like, and, and actually you thought, oh, cool, I'm going to do this. I'm going to follow this and, and do like this for as, as, a, as a job, as, as a life choice. Yeah. Um, my, my dad um, had a printing company, so when I was young, I always went downstairs and, and tried some, some stuff on the computer or painted some stuff for, for local festivals or corporate designer stuff like that. Yeah, I always liked graphic design and, and art, and then I studied art and, and cultural history. Um, but uh, I always worked in advertising uh, advertising agencies for, for big companies and brands. And then um, five or six years ago, I, I was getting bored of this shit, of the advertising world. I, I hated it so much. Uh, and I always loved punk rock music and I always loved the covers, the posters and everything else. And um, yeah, I thought, yeah, I want to do this. And then there was this... Uh, competition of Joey Cape he was looking for a poster a shirt design for his um, solo tour in Australia wow. and <laughs> um, yeah I just I just sent him some some um, art submissions and he always he really liked them and then he took them and um, then I sent him some stuff for Bad Astronaut and met uh, me first in the Gimme Gimme's and they all liked the stuff. And uh, then he invited me to a show. And yeah, then I was getting to know all the bands. And so oh, cool. all this uh, kind of so, so it kind of started with that, like, um, 
like lucky events. I, I won't call it lucky because you you yeah. put in your effort, you put yeah, in your yeah. work, in. but yeah. um, but obviously you deserved it, right? <laughs> but, <laughs> but that 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 kind of event, like then the the sequence of that event brought like more stuff and more stuff. Yeah, exactly. And, yeah. Stuff. and um, at some point you were just focusing on doing um, like illustration and graphic design for punk rock bands and yeah. the community. Yeah. All yeah. right. All right. Yeah. Uh, but it was, it was just the beginning. I, after this, uh, I think I sent 10,000 emails to every band I know um, and asked them if they need some artworks. And uh, I think two or five replied and, um, yeah, then I always send submissions to every band and and yeah, I, I get I always get more feedback uh, every year and, and now I get I have to the chance to do artwork for bigger bands now. That's that's really cool now, yeah. So so basically, um in, in some way it's kind of like similar to uh the process of maybe a DIY band that is starting. You have to yes. contact all the promoters and all these people so you can get like known and then evolve. Um, do you think there's like a similarity? I mean, it's kind of obvious, but it, the, the working process is pretty much the same. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. Uh, of course, I think so too, yeah. It's, it's pretty it's, much the same, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> kind of funny, kind of funny like how uh, in the scene, people kind of tend to, to have like a, a way of doing stuff and basically is Man, doing the best you can and getting your message out, you know, and people mm -hmm. who are uh, like afraid of uh, putting themselves out or exposing themselves like professionally and stuff. Yeah, it's it's kind of um, it's kind of probable, probable that you're going to make something happen, you know, mm -hmm. like it will it will happen. And yeah. um, because of that, um, you started building like you started doing like the illustration, doing like loads of works for, for bands and. At some point, that came into like, it, this. This came into the point where, like, cool, I have a network, and I'm I'm gonna start my own festival. How did that work? Uh, it was it, like how how was the first experiences, and how big is the festival now? Like uh, how how the, the 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 festival idea developed. Um, before I started the festival, I already did some club shows in my hometown. Uh, but I always want to do a festival because uh, uh, I love so many bands and I want to have them at my festival. And yeah, uh, and I, I don't think a lot about stuff. I just do it. And that was the reason why I, Spamfest was created in uh, a couple of weeks, the first one. And the first one was capacity of three or 400 people. And now it's about 2000. Amazing. Amazing. Yeah. And for, for how long do you have the festival now? Since 2017. Amazing. Yeah. So obviously now on the 2020 is going to be like canceled, but you're going to come yeah. back next year, right? Yeah, there's the plan to do it in the, at the end of October. But um, yeah, at the moment, it's very unlikely that it's going to happen because the numbers in Austria are getting higher and higher. And yeah, it's pretty shitty. Do, do you have, um, like, talking a little bit of, of the good times, because obviously, yeah, we're, we're having, like, some weird times right now. Yeah. But uh, from, like, each edition, do you have, like, any highlights or something that, like, will, obviously, like, the whole festival, and because you're organizing, it gives you, like, a, a, a really cool, like, inside, like, experience. But is there, like, any highlights of years or a band or a certain thing that happened that you liked about your festival like what experiences um, what made you feel you know it it was well, every festival was, was a highlight for me because um there was every time a band that i grew up with uh like uh the bouncing souls or Millen Colin or stuff like that and it was such an honor to have them on my festival and yeah and, and all the people that are coming to to the fest it's it's more than a, it's more family because it's we're really a family atmosphere. All the bands are, are hanging out at the merch booth and they don't, most of them are not hiding in the backstage room. They're always wandering around and talking to people and, and that that's pretty cool. And 
<laughs> yeah, it's it's always pretty stressful at the festival itself. But yeah, but I don't have specific memories or specific highlights. It was every every festival is a highlight for me. Um, yeah. Ah oh, man, that's that's super awesome. And and uh, w another thing, like you were mentioning that the um, the festival, like everybody's hanging around, like bands and non-bands, like everybody mm. basically is hanging around. Um, is it something that you it makes you like feel proud of of your work because it, the punk community is all about like getting united and and being like together and celebrating life all together. So having that in your festival is a really good thing. Makes you it probably makes you feel good, right? Yeah, yeah, that's a good, that's a good feeling. Yeah, I, I normally I don't like festivals. I love the the club show atmosphere. I love the the small clubs, and uh, I don't like the big festivals. It's it's not a, I I, I just don't like them. Uh, but so two, three thousand people at the festival, it's pretty yeah. small for a festival. That that that's what I was gonna ask you next. Like, is that the reason that you're keeping like the festival in these numbers? And uh, yeah. that's the plan to like keep it like kind of uh, like not not small, but like small enough to be like cozy and everybody like hangs yeah. out with everybody. Yeah, I, I don't want to make it bigger than three thousand people. All right, <laughs> nah, cool, man. Yeah. Another um, another thing that um, we were talking about uh, the other day was the fact that like right after the festival, you. Um, you started like as well your own label. Do you want to explain how, how that process ha happened? Again, like I know you're an intuitive person and you just do like things like as you go, uh, but can you explain like uh, the need for a label or, you know, and, and, um, and also, also like, yeah, yeah. Also the, um, also the fact that you're doing uh, the illustration, the festival and the label thing all under the same name, which is a really cool idea. Yeah. Um, I never had plans to do a label. Uh, for the second Spam Fest, we had this, we did this compilation with a double LP uh, for charity. And after that, um, a lot of bands asked me if I want to put a record out um, and if they can be on my label. And I, I didn't have a label at this time. Uh, but there was this cool band, like it, it's called It's Consumed from from the UK. I always loved them, and they asked me. To, to release their their EP, and I just said yes. Let's 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 do a label, and um, yeah, that's that's we've, we've consumed everything started. Yeah, and amazing. The amazing. first year it was just a couple of releases, and but this year is pretty good. We have a lot of uh, upcoming releases like Bracket or Chaser, oh, nice. music, and yeah, not on tour and. Do you think um do you think like that this um this like current situation like affected uh like somehow it's obviously affected the live uh, part of of the scene uh but have you felt like a, like another like more work in the label side probably with releases and people wanting to put more stuff out or is it still the same or it is like affected as much as the live scene what 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 is your thoughts on that uh, i think um currently i think bands have a lot of time to to record stuff because there there's nothing to do else uh the, you can you can't play shows or, or travel or, i think um there will be a lot of releases this or next year all yeah. right all right so yeah i yeah exactly i mean myself I, i i'm feeling like pretty creative as well so i, I guess like a lot of people are doing pretty much the same thing yeah. And, and yeah it's good for like labels and stuff because probably a lot of good music is being created like in this time as well mm, of course yeah <laughs> um yeah w one thing i wanted to to also talk with you buddy is like the fact that everything is under like the same name spam mm -hmm. uh Like, do you have a reason for that, or is it just because it is what it is? <laughs> um, yeah, that spam is just uh, some letter, let us slap together from my name. Um, yeah, first of all, I've never thought I, that I have a festival or a record label, uh, and then it was pretty obvious just to 
used to name and put fest after it or records after it or, or whatever after it uh so it was yeah I, I, but i just want to make a brand out of it yeah yeah it, it felt it felt just natural to do it that yeah. way right? yeah totally no, amazing um buddy like in terms in terms of illustration like I, i'm a tattooari so it's kind of like a visual work as well or related um there's a lot of like preparation involved a lot of studies a lot of uh, hours like drawing and and developing a skill um mm. in, in your opinion like if someone wants to follow like a similar path of of illustration or graphic design uh what are your recommendations for someone that is like for instance like a like between like 15 and 18 like that's the first like group that i want to for you to say something about and then like people that are actually more like in their mid 20s and and over that like because i think there's like two different like parts of your life so mm -hmm. i don't know if you have different um different kind of suggestions for different uh ages as well <laughs> yeah um i really never liked school uh and uh Uh, but if I could start again, I would um, go to school and, and do the university after this. I, I think I started studying uh, at 26 or 27. Um, right. I would do this much earlier now. Um, yeah, I, I just just do whatever you want. Uh, paint, uh, do, uh, bother the bands and, and send them stuff and Yeah, that was all I I I did to to. So to so basically, the basically it's pretty like you, your way of acting like in the world and in reality is just do it, you know. Yeah, yeah, That's, of course, just just do it. Uh, don't think about it. No regrets. Uh, just just do it. Yeah. No, because yeah, what 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 worse can happen? You know, at least you're yeah. trying. At least you're trying to to make something out of yourself, something that you like, something that you love, and that's right. that's super yeah. important, man. And I really I really do appreciate having people like you in this program because, I mean, during this last I don't know now it's the seventh week, so yeah, more than a month now. I I've been having so many different people with so many uh different like backgrounds and opinions and ideas to share. I think it's really good that, uh, like, again, someone that uh, doesn't play an instrument or is not like actually like recording music or uh, now you're putting out music, you know. But like, <laughs> <laughs> but but it's it's really cool that you like through illustration and through something like a, a passion that you have like for punk rock, you you yeah. kind of like mix those two worlds and made a living out of it. You know, that's yeah. like. That's yeah, that, that, that was my only chance um, uh, because that's the only thing I can do is is painting, uh, drawing. Uh, I always regret that I can't play an instrument. So that was the this, the other option to get into the punk rock scene. So <laughs> instead of playing, exactly. Oh yeah, that lit that that exactly leads me to your question, man. How did you get in contact with the punk rock scene? Like how? Yeah, how did it happen, man? Um. I always was skateboarding when when I was a kid, and um, my brother used to listen to No Effects and Lagwagon, and he introduced me to the to all this this bands when I was twelve or thirteen, and yeah, that that was when all this happened. I really loved the music after the first time I heard it, and that's yeah, I, I love the music and I love the scene and everything else. And, yeah. Amazing, <laughs> dude. That's that's pretty awesome, man. Like. Um, yeah, another thing, um, yeah, I, I have like a lot of like little questions here, yeah, like, sure. um, no, because it's what I, what I'm trying to do with this conversations is trying to create something like educational, like for people that might want to like start doing illustration, for instance, or create their own festival or mm -hmm. create their own label, you know, because I think, um, like now more than ever, it's like quite easy to at least start doing something or create a project or, you know, like, so if we have like people like you and like and many other people like just trying to uh, put these words out, you know, and informing mm. people, uh, we might create like a platform where everybody is actually trying and learning, yeah. you know, it's, it's pretty cool. So from your festivals experiences and the shows you organize and like um what do you think is like the 
obviously you had like a little bit of, of, of help through the network you already built on the illustration, but um, like, what do you recommend like for people that want to book a show or organize a little festival and they don't know how to approach the bands or, you know, or how to, you know, like how to make something happen? Like they have the space, they have everything, but they no, don't know how to approach them. You know, how, how do you do that? It was pretty hard to get bigger bands at the beginning um, because if you if you uh, send a message to a booking label, uh, they're not really interested in, in doing something with you because you don't have any references. Uh, I think they're getting tons of email every day. Uh, I want to book no effects for my birthday party or something like that. Uh, yeah, the, the, the hardest thing was to get... Uh, to get good bands in the beginning. But right. it was pretty easy for me because, uh, easier for me because I already worked with a lot of bands at this time. Um, yeah, but uh, that, that's, that's a hard thing. And, and also to, to, um, to get all the people to the show, it's not that easy anymore to, 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 to draw a crowd and, and, um, that's pretty hard at the moment. That, that's that's a really good point you're making there. Um, because I remember, like, I, I play in bands since I'm like, I, I don't know, 15, 16, so like mm. over 10 years now. And I, I do remember that like 10 years ago, it was way easier to get people coming to shows. And yeah, like, totally. Like, yeah. totally. It was like a total, total different uh, mm. scene, you know. Uh, I'm not saying that it's better or it's worse. It's mm. just like that time changes and everything changes as well. Yeah. Um, but because of that, like, uh, wh what kind of um, what kind of communication you try to keep, like, with with the fan base of the festival um, to keep like people people coming? Uh, it's it's the bands, but it's not only the bands. It's the, the kind of like the environment of the festival. How can you explain a little bit more, if, if you want? Obviously, man. <laughs> sure. Um... Yeah, it's it's like I said, it's pretty hard because I try to use social media a lot, but um, the average age at my festival at the moment is around thirty. So, uh, All right. uh, it's it's they're not the the they're really the, the the people that are on social media or on Facebook anymore. Uh, so we try to 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 hand out flyers and and stick up posters and and stuff like that, but. Uh, it's it's like I said, it's pretty hard. Um, but um, like uh, the the Corona crisis at the moment, it helped me a lot to 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 gain more followers. That's that was the only positive thing uh, at this uh, shitty year. Yeah. Um, I that 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 was the the best thing. Yeah, I have a lot of more followers now because I did some some shows, online shows. Yeah, but uh, I can't wait to to do festivals again. Nah, man. I I mean, it, it's way better. Like I've been talking to like musicians and every and everybody's like, cool. Like live live streams are all right and everything, yeah. but we want like live shows again. Yeah. You know, like everybody wants like the the audience, like people that organize shows, the musician. I think like I think now more than ever, we're kind of realizing that. Um, it's about like us coming together and celebrating mm. life as humans and yeah. and that's that's pretty amazing i mean as you said like this shitty time sometimes have positive outcomes and mm. one of the things is probably that because you didn't have the chance to do the festival you created some like online strategy and keep keep going you know and that's what I think as well. Like it's 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 really important and and good to do. Uh, adapt, you know. Uh, don't throw yourself down. Throw mm. yourself forward, you know. Yeah. And uh, it's 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 quite it's quite amazing uh, to see that like a lot of people share this kind of like same mentality and same mindset of like, okay, the world is like appears to be against me but i'm gonna move forward you know yeah yeah i know what you mean yeah so so that's that's pretty good and i i really again like i really appreciate you coming today and like talking about about like yeah your stuff what you do uh how you do it you know 
um, mm. it's it's really it's really nice. Um, one thing I usually um, ask people to to do in this show as well, if you have any plug or any band or any like release you have soon from your label, just let us know here as well because it's uh, yeah it's it's important as well for for everyone to know. Um, yeah, so plans there there are a lot of plans for for next year. Um, I'm already working on the spam fest for for next year. It's gonna be really cool. I have confirmed most of the lineup yet. Um, then there are plans for a US uh, art show tour, one or two months. Um, then um, yeah, we have a lot of releases this year. Like like I said, bracket, chaser. Um, Mercy Music, then maybe we're going to have a release, a new album from Nadan Sur. Don't know yet, but I'm, I'm trying. Um, that would be great, man. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, but the main focus at the moment is uh, the record label and also the festival for next year. Yeah. All right. All right. Yeah. Um, did, did you have to, did you have like a lot of issues like with tickets and stuff, like putting them next year and like, or, or what? Yeah, at, at the moment I just have to, uh, I just moved the Spam Festival from May to end of October. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and I really hope this will happen, but uh, like I said, at the moment it's not looking good here in Austria. Um, exactly. Yeah, uh, we had a lot of issues with, with giving back tickets and um, the the festival makes the makes the most money uh, for the whole year it's, it's just oh, for a living. I just make this for a living and um, the festival the cancelled festival was uh, pretty much of a bummer it was horrible it, especially because I think it was the best lineup I ever had with uh, me first strung out suicide machines uh, Vandals, Frank Turner. <laughs> it's not, yeah, it's not, a, not a small festival, bro. <laughs> yeah, it was. Yeah, this. No, it man. Was, but again, like that's that's why we're here, man. That's why, like, that's why we're like. At least this is this is what I can do from my end. Is like put, giving you a platform for you to speak out this. And mm. I mean, you should probably speak out this more, like, to more people and more platforms because, I mean. It's people sometimes think that it's only the only the musicians that are struggling through these times, but like mm. everybody that surrounds like the scene and does something active in the scene is actually struggling a little bit, you know, because yeah. it affected all of us. Yeah, totally. Because uh, I'm not a big company; I'm just a couple of people, and it's all DIY, and um, uh, so it's yeah, it's pretty hard if you have one year lost. So we had a lot of releases from from spam record bands uh, that came out on on in April or something like this, and uh, they can't tour and they can't uh, show their, their their new music to the to the people and, and yeah, and, that's, and that's everybody hard. knows everybody yeah. knows that like these bands like survive on touring as well. Yeah, totally. Yeah. It's like okay, festivals. We we play sometimes in festivals and stuff, but like most of these bands is like the the tour part, like the constantly touring that keeps like these bands alive. Mm -hmm. So yeah, buddy. But I mean, let's let's see what what like the next times or next months will will yeah. Let's see what happens in the next months, man. And yeah. and yeah. hopefully things get better. Hopefully you can do your festival. If not, you can do next year. But um, yeah, I'm just. Uh, sharing some some good vibes to you and i hope this <laughs> all goes well you know because again like you deserve it you came from a background that you built it yourself you you yeah you you made you made your way through like by doing things you love which is really inspiring yeah again that's one of the reasons i wanted uh yeah for you to talk here today and uh man actually dude it's been it's been a pleasure having you here man thank you so much dude thank you thank you it was <laughs> a pleasure for me dude um like yeah if if there's i i see some people here in the chat um i don't know i i just read now the comments i usually do this <laughs> <laughs> um yeah if if anyone has some questions for stefan or to me you can just uh 
write it up here. And uh, oh, cool. We have some. Yeah, hopefully everything will end well. Cool. Oh, man, amazing. We have some people sent, sharing their love. And yeah, by the way, Thank you. everybody that is watching this, go support Spam, go support their illustrations, festivals, label, like, yeah, buy his records, buy like a ticket for his festival in Austria. Austria is a pretty cool place. <laughs> <Thank> <laughs> I've been, I've been uh, in uh, Vienna and Graz a couple of times. Okay, and cool. It, it's a pretty cool place. Oh, and my yeah, last cool. music video was recorded in uh, Vienna. Okay, um, cool. With with like a friend of mine that was there, and yeah. uh, it was like in lockdown, so Vienna was like empty, <laughs> which is not like a, a natural thing, but it, it it worked really well for for the video. Um, yeah, dude. Once again, man, thank you so much for 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 being here. Thank you for your thank good you. energy, man. Thank you, and hope we can meet in real life soon. And maybe yeah. you can come to the festival. You are my guest, and. Uh... No, dude. Thank you so much, man. Yeah, dude, for sure, man. Like when when this festival can happen, I would gladly come. And yeah, like even do like reports on bands and stuff like that. Like yeah. no problem, man. I, I okay, would, cool. I would, I would be like really happy to help out as well in in the way I can, man. Cool. Thank you so much. Now, dude, thank you, man. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your energy. And uh, this was a pretty cool and informative episode. Um, yes. Yeah. I, I, I just want to draw now as well, man. Like, I, I'm feeling like pumped <laughs> from this conversation. It's cool, man. Yeah. Um, yeah, and hopefully my shop will be open soon so I can draw again, like, and express myself yeah. in, this, in this language. <laughs> and I have to get a tattoo from you if um, next time in the UK. Yeah, dude. Fuck yeah. Fuck yeah. For sure, man. For sure. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, bring, I'll bring my stuff to Austria, dude. <laughs> yeah, cool. That's even better. <laughs> nah, man. Again, dude, thank you so much for your time. You. Um, yeah. And I hope you had, um, yeah, I hope you had a good time. Yeah, and, of course, uh, totally. Uh, cool, man, cool. And uh, see you, see you anytime soon, or yeah. uh, who knows, man, when this when the situation gets better. And uh, yeah, thank you, brother. Thank yeah. you, man. <laughs> cool, thank you. Bye-bye, brother. Bye, bye, <laughs> bye. So everybody, thank you so much for, for sticking out and um, being here, listening to, to what Stefan has to say. Uh, this was a really cool, a really cool conversation. Uh, we went through um, the, the illustration part um, of like his career, uh, the festival he's created and the label that is all under the same name, Spam. Um, yeah, just go check it out on Instagram and Facebook there. Uh, yeah, he's... I think, yeah, he's all over the social medias too. Obviously, it's 2020. Uh, and yeah, thank you so much for, for staying here. Uh, thank you for your support. Thank you for your love. Um, tomorrow, we're going to have Nuno's, uh, Neil. <laughs> I was going to say the other name, but no worries. Uh, Neil Layton from Lusitanian Ghosts. And uh, yeah, um, I'm just happy that I I'm, I'm keep doing this. Uh, and after tomorrow... I'll have another week of a show and probably another week after that week. Uh, so yeah, I'm just going to keep doing this till, till I probably get back to work and then I'll restructure um, this whole thing and continue doing it anyway. So thank you so much for, for, yeah, for being here and uh, I'll see you tomorrow at five. Bye bye.